Well, just helping a good friend of mine, Honda CRV issue. There's no crank. Let's see what we'll diagnose it and how to get it fixed. Let's see. Okay. Let's try the crank. This is nothing. Hmm. No power at all. Dead. Okay, let's check her battery. 2.4 IV Tech dual overhead cam engine. Very common. Okay, I connected my multimeter, check the voltage. Oh, we have 1.4 volts flat like completely there's no power why and it says it ch charged october 2019 hmm, that's interesting i have a flat battery what we can do <laughs> well we can uh, well we can uh, jump start it from the truck and uh, but battery needs to be charged for sure let's try to jump start and feed some power okay positive on this side all right positive on this down to negative and negative to here to the vehicle ground we have 14 volts coming from the truck let's go try to crank see what will happen 2007 CRB where's the rookie at least we might have oh that's some buzzer there's the lights. Oh. Okay. We have a click. No start. Well, that's something. Seems like a starter might be having an entire electrical shirt that's drained the battery this is my assumption engine light is flat. oh disappeared all good with that and uh, seems like it's one of the relays is clicking well we need now to verify it if we're getting power down to the starter the control wire terminal and go from there but uh, battery definitely needs to be charged before we'll go too far and dive under the vehicle let's check the, our fuses i popped a cover from the um, fuse relay box and we're interested in fuse number one battery 100 amps and fuse number two ignition switch main which is uh, number one is this guy over here and number two let's go and lay it out okay our number one is this oh it's hard to see on camera but i see the fuse is not blown it's good and our fuse number two number two is ignition switch main this guy uh, no this one this guy 5080 5080 oh it's hard to see but it's good and as you can see man is not disturbed as well our fuses are good and uh, well, we could hear the click, means circuit had a power, 
but uh, let's find out if we are getting power down to the control side of the starter. Brothers and sisters, I know it's hard to get to the starter cut relay on this Honda, but uh, I'm going to show you where it's located. It's uh, R3 abbreviation number for that relay. It's pretty hard to get there. And uh, I better will go and check the power, the control side of the starter. But I remove this fuse panel. Let's turn my lights on. And it's under the dash. There's a fuse box. And this guy, this is your starter relay. And uh, you can pull it out and test it. Control side of the relay, load side, ground. But uh, also we'll go and uh, check the power at the starter on the ignition. If I want to get any power, I will probably try to pull this relay because it's so it's so hard to get it out. And um, yeah, let's go down to the starter and see what we have there. And uh, yeah, this is our plan to attack this issue. This is a CS3 release. This is your starter boy. All right. It's pretty, pretty uncomfortable position. Let's go out. This door is trying to close on me all the time. Okay. And that's one thing. We'll leave it like this for now. Let it charge a little bit. But to get to the starter, there's no way from the top, you need to go from underneath and it's all the way down there. Under the intake manifold we need to raise the vehicle up and get to the starter from the bottom. Okay, let's do that part. To brake applied, I have a, my wheels chopped. Jack it up, put in a jack stand and uh, Going to remove those plastic shields. There's a number of those type of plastic pop pins. You pry the inner part out, like so, with a flat screwdriver or pick. And then you need to use the, this type of pry bar, what is it like pry tool, and pull them out, like so bottom plastic uh, cover shield removed and there's our uh, starter over there it's the only way you can reach to that guy and uh, um, we need to get in and test it from the oh, that's uh, let's I'll try to show you and as you can see there's a signal wire is going to the solenoid from the ignition and we need to test uh, for the voltage at this guy and uh, before i will get there i need to get myself a little bit of room there's a few things still on the way I need to remove uh, this uh, bracket and i will be using a t-pin with alligator clip to that wire and another side to the ground and we'll check the power. I remove the bracket out of the way and put it aside and for removing that bracket there's a two bolts and to remove those bolts this is one of those upper bracket mounting bolt and this is the bottom. You just need it for bottom you just use the 3 8 uh, ratchet with a deep socket for the bottom and to get a top one you need a couple extensions and you remove that, that guy. Now we get a better room and more access to that, that connector. There's a wiring harness. I might just pull this one out. Okay, let's turn the light on. Okay, good. Um, I move the wiring harness out of the way. For, for the test we're going to use the simple test light. Let's just verify the test light is working. This battery is dead but should be enough I hope.
to light a test light. See, it's working. One and a half volts so, in this battery. Okay, our test light is good. Let's go get it connected. Let's see if our ground is good. Turn the battery positive. Yeah, lit. Okay, sweet. I have everything set up. Originally, I was thinking to back prop using a tip in from that uh, so ignition feed power to the starter solenoid at the back side of the connector, just inserting a tip in, but it's not enough room. You need to have a baby hands to get there. I disconnect it. I insert my tip in. There's a using an alligator type of connector for my test light from the voltmeter. And you will say uh, you should test it under the load. Yeah, you're right, I know. And I don't want to insert the test light into the connector and spread the terminals. And that's connected. And my ground side connected to the vehicle chassis. I cleaned this bolt pretty good. And you know, our test light works. Now when we'll put a turn a key to the starter position, we should see the light. That's what we're hunting for. Okay, we're ready. We'll watch for lights. Okay, turn to start. I think it's not wasn't getting good connection. I just touch it. Okay, try it now. Oh yeah, good. One more time. Good. We have a power. Well, tip in somehow or another didn't go there. And uh, yeah, we're getting power to the signal. Well, that means our probably starter is bad. Beauty. We have a power at this ignition control wire to the starter. And uh, even to get to the main uh, battery wire to the starter, you need to remove the starter. There's no way you can get there. It's way up there. And uh, yeah, now I just touch it enough to get the connection with this pin. And uh, yeah, as soon as uh, she turned key to the start position, we had a light. Yeah. Connector is not disturbed, all good. And okay, we might have some rain. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal. Sure, one short accidentally anything and start to remove the starter. 10 mil to lose the negative battery clamp nut, pull it out. Just no negative, set it aside away, sure it won't get connected accidentally. To remove the starter, you see both bolts are out. And I just will give you a general idea how to get there. Okay, to remove this bolt, this is a front bolt, which is relatively easy to get there. You need to start with a 17 mil half inch braking bar, break it loose and then Finish it with a uh, 17 mil, 17 mil socket and ratchet three eighths. And where's my? Uh, okay, where's it? Okay, so 17 mil uh, socket. Pretty easy, straightforward with this one. And then challenge begins when we, you need to go and get this bolt. Let's dive in. I show you how to get there and what need you need to get out of the way first. You need to uh, remove the connector from the okay from the that guy. This is an oil pressure sensor. Disconnect that. Then I managed not to cut that plastic tie. I just uh, pried the clip and uh, pull it out from the bracket get myself enough room to get 
behind it's so tight very hard you need to well in a way just uh, not enough room and hard to find the bolt with a socket to get on it and uh, yeah as soon as you pull that harness up and remove that uh, connector from the oil pressure sensor then okay we're going back to our starter as example okay this type of bolt you will see it's extended like this and it, it sits okay just let's flip it then you need to start with a with this ratchet like this and uh, it's 14 mil bolt start with a ratchet and extension like swivel just extend it with the swivel like this i wrapped electrical tape because i need to add some stiffness to the joint and that bolt is 14 mil start it like this break it loose i use this type of ratchet i have another one but wasn't enough room to wrench it out and i broke it loose like this then i made like five turns then i pull this socket out way you need to do that because if you'll keep going you won't have a room to remove the ratchet and a socket you will get so close toward the sensor that pressure sensor then you do just a uh, combo this 14 mil 3 8 and a swivel then you turn them to the point then uh, you end it towards the um, sensor because you won't be able to go anymore remove this swivel and short socket and then put at that point it will be easy to turn by hand and then you put it deep 14 mil socket 3 8 and then finish it by hand that's uh, how i did it took me a while to figure it out and uh... okay bolts are out now we need to remove the starter it sits tight inside the aluminum transmission bell housing goes a hammer and whack it just be careful not hit it uh, housing of the starter just over here just break it loose a couple times like so and that should be good enough it will come out okay we'll go there with my hands and pull it out because it's very very not much room to film to let it start to come out you need to turn it like this uh, control clockwise pull it out turn it control clockwise push it in wiggle it and uh, then you will get past this uh, thermostat housing and uh, yeah then you go in turn it and it will come out like this then you see our uh, uh, battery hot wire down to the starter i need to undo this bad boy and uh, yeah that's uh, how you remove the starter remove that uh, battery cable and break it loose and yeah, remove that guy yeah that's the hardest part to undo the back bolt that's okay i disconnect my uh, my cable now it should come out somehow or another we'll make it out okay oh uh, yeah okay let me use both hands go oh. uh just uh guide the starter past this train cock and uh yeah. it'll be good starter is out and uh, let's take a look inside here we go uh, yeah. 
that's the uh, bolt I was talking about. All the clean up, uh, clean the cables, terminals, make sure we have a good connection, no rust, no crust. Yeah, looks clean and dry to me. Yeah, it's just a dust. Yeah, it's not green. Yeah, just a dust and we'll clean. And uh, now, put everything back together. Well, replacement part. Mm, well, my Sidelco. Yeah, uh, Sidelco starter. This is a part number. Mm, yeah, it's not OEM. It's not new, remanufactured. Probably price matters, manufactured, and yeah. Anyway, I'll put this uh, guy in and uh, charge the battery and should be, should be good. But uh, before you start putting the new part, just put the old one side by side with the new one. Just check, make sure it's identical. That can be sometimes some difference or wrong part ship. And uh, yep. Inspect, make sure it has no any at least uh, damages which you can uh, see on the body of this. And uh, this is old one, seems like they are identical. Um, this is a just a help to a good friend of mine, and uh, there's no pain, there's only hobby. And uh, when people ask, uh, oh, how much do you want for this? Or I said, no, you just uh, give money to the kids' charity, how much your heart tells you. And uh, yeah, help the kids to have a better education, better life. Yeah, you might say why I didn't go and check the battery power at the main battery wire. Yeah, I could. Well, one thing, it was uh, impossible to get it there when starter was installed. And as soon as I pulled, I checked the uh, integrity of this uh, hot wire from the battery from here to the battery side. Check the resistance and continuity. This uh, wire is good. This is just straight, uh, always hot feed down to the starter. It's very good. And uh, also ground. I clean all ground and. Uh, Yep, it seems like uh, it's not a problem. And uh, yeah, we should be good. Hey, hey, everything's back in place how it should. All wiring connected and mounted, and uh, that uh, back starter bolt was uh, suffering. I would say 8, 9 out of the 10. Pretty hard to do that. But now everything's tight, connected. Oh, now it should start. Okay, yeah. Have everything connected, better still that she started. Yeah, bet! Woo! The moment I see. Easy peasy. Yeah, your battery is still dead. I will remove a battery, charge it overnight on uh, like 5 10 amps, and put it back, and you rock and roll. Good to go. Yeah. Me, me. Okay, just let it run. We'll check the uh, power that the alternator is put in. Okay. Vehicle is still running. We disconnect the uh, booster cables and uh, just checking the voltage from the alternator. Yeah, and she's putting 13.8, 13.9, and perfectly fine in specs. Everything's back in place. Let's take it for a spin. Close the hood. Oh, I like this moment. Let's take it for a spin. 251,900 on the clock. Let's put our seat belt on. On park. Parking brake with release. Put it on the reverse. And
Well, yeah, baby. Let's take you for a drive. Oh, so hot. Let's open the window. Yeah, a little bit of clunky noise on the suspension, probably. Needs a shock, no one's coming. I left. Oh, yeah. The rear shocks needs to be replaced. And, uh, yeah. I like Hondas, they're nice, we're a good build vehicle and a uh, pleasure to drive, they last if you take care of them and um, yeah, it just always feels good to help and uh, also record the video and help more people around the world, yeah, drives good, so we'll just we'll need to charge the battery, thank you so much again. And see you soon. Bye-bye.